Today we're going to talk all about this greenhouse. Hey everyone, before we get into the video today, I just wanted to mention that this Saturday, April 11th at 5 p.m., Jackie is going to be live on the Homesteady Show for their Don't Be Scared, Be Prepared live special. As I'm sure you're well aware, there's a whole lot of crazy stuff going on in the world right now. As some of you may know, Jackie is a licensed mental health counselor here in New Hampshire. And that's her full-time job. That's what she does every day, Monday through Friday, nine to five, nine to six, nine to seven some nights. And we were talking with Austin over at Homesteady and both of us thought it would be pretty cool if Jackie could share some ideas on using mindfulness, which is a strategy she uses in her therapy, to help homesteaders be more prepared. They're not anything crazy. They're just some little things that you can do to keep your wits about you mentally in a situation like we're facing today. So you're not getting all wrapped up and anxious over everything. You know, there's a whole lot of anxiety right now out there in the world. And the last thing really everyone should be doing is shutting down with anxiety, but we should be more proactive and taking better care of ourselves during times like this. So again, that's gonna be this Saturday, April 11th at 5 p.m over on the Homesteady YouTube channel. If you're not already a subscriber of Homesteady, which you should be if you follow us, uh, but if you're not, head over there and check them out and give them a subscription and then look for us on Saturday afternoon. Let's get on to the video. <laughs> She's not happy. What's going on everyone? Jack here at the Mindful Homestead, hanging out outside with Jackie and Emma. So, not too much going on this weekend at the homestead. Pretty much just hanging out, enjoying the nice weather. It was sunny yesterday and relatively warm, and today it's a little bit warmer. Not as sunny as you can see, but still relatively nice to be outside, especially after it rained all week. It was pretty awful. Nobody really wanted to be outside. So it's pretty nice. We're finally settling into a spring pattern here in New England. Uh, the crocuses are up. They're usually the first flowers that we get. So they're up and they're blooming, which is awesome. It's a great sign of spring. It is chick season here in New Hampshire. We have 10 new chicks that we brought onto the homestead for this year. Emma's own chicken coop when they're bantams. <laughs> we ended up going with five white leggings and five ISA browns. We wanted something that was a little bit more production oriented. Uh, we've had a lot of inquiries for our eggs in the last couple weeks with the whole thing that's going on. So as part of that, we wanted to bring on some breeds for the fall that were a little bit more oriented in making eggs versus just looking pretty in the backyard. We don't have anything against heritage breeds. We don't have anything against rainbow eggs or anything like that. We love our olive eggers. We love our blue layers. We love all of our colored eggs but we wanted something that was just gonna make a good sturdy egg that we could sell the customers and not worry about running short. So we brought those on. So that's really kind of what's going on right now. We've got our seeds started inside, so really nothing to do there. Uh, pigs are gonna be coming in mid-May, so we'll have that area way back there cleared out for them by then. But right now with as wet as it is, I can't really be back there doing anything. The tractor would sink right up to the axles. But we did get some questions on one of our previous videos, I forget which one it was exactly. Uh, when I find out, I'll put a link to it up here in the corner. But we got some questions about our greenhouse. Somebody saw it perched sitting on top of one of our raised beds. And they said, hey, what, what's the scoop with that thing? So I wanted to talk a little bit about that today and fill you in on what we did to take this admittedly subpar greenhouse and turn it into something that was a lot nicer than what we got from the store. This thing is admittedly a pretty cheap greenhouse. I don't even know if it has a name. I've seen it described as eight shelf greenhouse. I've seen it described as 12 shelf greenhouse if they have a couple across the back. The bottom line with it is, I think we got this for 60 bucks or something like that from a local discount store. Uh, they are available on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description down below. They're just press fit together. 
thin steel tubing into plastic fittings. It's really not a whole lot going on with it. Uh, the covering on it is actually kind of nice. It does have fiber uh, laminated in between two pieces of plastic. So it's not that bad. The overall rigidity of these things is just really not that great. If you were to just build this thing and set it in your backyard, a stiff wind could come along and it would blow it just right up and over. I had the plans to kind of build a frame for it to sit on. And not only would it add weight to it so that wind wasn't so much of a factor, but hey Finn. But I also wanted to make it mobile so that if we wanted to put this thing, move it to different parts of the yard that we're getting better sun, or even if we wanted to just set it over one of our raised beds, we could do that. In this video, I'm gonna show you the modifications that we made to this thing to make it, in my opinion, a much better greenhouse than what you get for 60 bucks. Let's take a look at it. So this thing is pretty straightforward. You've got a plastic covering with fiber in it to reinforce it that stretches over the frame and your door just consists of two zips and the whole thing rolls right up. So if you take a look at the inside here, you can see it's got a couple shelves which just sit right here. But the main thing I want you to see here is how this is held together. And you can see these plastic hubs that are set up and they're not very great. Um, they don't tolerate a whole lot of wiggling. If you were to let these things get super cold and try to put some torque on them, they would almost definitely break. So this whole thing overall, it kind of just suffers from a lack of structural rigidity. What I kind of aimed to do by putting it on this platform was stiffen up the whole bottom of this thing and make it so that this didn't move as much and we could actually take this thing and move it around. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the racks off. I'm actually going to lay this thing down so you can see the bottom and I'll show you, I'm shaking the camera right now and I'll show you the measurements on the bottom so that if you were to build a greenhouse like this, you could actually build a similar platform for yourself. So at its simplest, this base is just a 57 by 57 inch square of two by four. Uh, I have two, that are running from the front to back of the greenhouse uh, that are on the bottom. And then the three that run across from side to side of the greenhouse, they sit up on top. That frame in essence allows the greenhouse to sit on top of these three cross members, just attaching your greenhouse to a 57 by 57 inch frame made of two by fours is gonna do a whole lot for the performance of this thing. It's gonna make it a lot more rigid. It's gonna add some weight to it so it's not gonna get taken across your yard. And it gives you the ability to actually take this thing, drill some holes if you wanted, and actually use some ground spikes or some big tent pegs to actually stake this thing down to the ground. The only thing I used to hold this to the frame was I had some heavy duty cable ties that you can see right here. And I just drilled holes through the two by fours, ran the cable ties up and over, and then cable tied it to the two by four. If you wanted to get much more involved with a strap system with a couple bolts or something like that, you could definitely do that as well. But for us, I mean, literally just cable ties was all we needed to hold the frame to the two by fours. The other thing I did was I got these small pneumatic wheels from Harbor Freight and they don't even really need to be inflated for this use just because the whole package is so light. But what I did was I attached them on the back side of the greenhouse toward the back corners. And then on the front, I put some blocks of wood that actually hold the whole frame up off the ground. And what that allows me to do is I can actually take this thing, pick up the front of it and wheel it around wherever I want it to go. It's a little bit tricky to do so with plants in it. You wouldn't want to have your plants inside the greenhouse and be moving this thing around because they'll slide right off those racks. But if you don't have anything in it and you want to get this thing to a new piece on your property, having these wheels on it is a great way to do so. So to attach the wheels, I didn't do anything crazy. I had this piece of threaded rod right here that just happened to fit through as an axle for the wheel. Put an extra piece of two by four on the side there. Just drilled a hole through it. Helping out. And then I just bent a piece of strapping at a 90 degree angle and screwed it in to hold the piece of threaded rod. And just a simple nut on the outside. 
So one of the other nice things about putting this greenhouse on a frame is that it fits perfectly right over a four foot by four foot raised bed. We have a video on the channel, I'll link it up here in the corner of us building our eight foot by four foot raised beds. And you can do the exact same design that we use in that video and just scale it down with four foot sides. And this will fit perfectly right over the top of it. For starting seeds early in the season, right around now, it's great because you can extend your growing season a couple weeks before your last frost. So if you wanna get cold weather crops like spinach or rabbit, or something like that in the ground, you can put them in, water them down nice and good, and then throw the greenhouse right over top of it and they'll sprout a little bit earlier than if you hadn't used a greenhouse. So those are pretty much the only modifications that we made to this thing to get it to where we have it now. The only other modification that we do make, and I didn't have it shown in this because we didn't do it yet for this year, we take the shelves off for the winter, but we zip tie the shelves to the bars on the inside that they attached to. It's a little bit tricky to think about because right now when you saw them, they were just sitting on top and there's really no sides to them at all and any plants that you put on there can fall right off. But if you flip them and zip tie them to the bars from the bottom, you can actually create a little bit of an edge where your plants aren't gonna fall off to the inside. But other than that, this thing for 60 bucks has been pretty rock solid. Um, it's definitely not something we would wanna leave out year round. We take the top off and we bring that into the garage during the winter time so that there's no snow load on it. Even though the little bit of snow we have gotten this spring on top of this thing, it slides right off. Uh, we just leave this inside because we don't want the harsh winters to really kind of take their toll on it. We are still looking at bringing in a more permanent hoop house or greenhouse type solution on our property. That's something that's still probably a few years down the line. Been pricing out some stuff. I know Alep at Lumna Acres just got one, which is pretty huge. Uh, definitely not something we want to go that big with. We're probably looking at something more in the 16 to 20 foot range. But for now, just having this thing outside is something to put our seedlings into after we get them off the shelf next to the window indoors. It's been great for us. If you want to pick one up, I'll have a link down in the description to a link on Amazon where you can buy one. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and we'll see you around. Bye.